has his spinal cord severed. Booth says, come and get me. Get me out of here. Here are these Union troops with the barn ablaze going in, grabbing him, pulling him out. And Booth says his final words. He tells these Union troops, I want to see my hands. Show me my hands. Now, these are troops that have seen war, some of them for years, saw death on a massive scale. And one of them says, I will never deny a dying man his last wish. Show him his hands. They pick up his hands, they put them in front of his face, and Booth looks at his hands and says, Useless. Useless. And dies shortly later. Now, the information of the conspiracy might die with him, but there are a few things we know. So now I gotta back up. We're gonna go back 12 days previously to this, back to the night of Lincoln's assassination. This conspiracy gets much wider, goes beyond just Lincoln. Like I say, these Southerners are looking to metaphorically decapitate the federal government. Lincoln's one target. Another target was Vice President Andrew Johnson. One of these conspirators who was in charge of killing Johnson goes to the bar first. He's drinking shot after shot of whiskey to get up the courage to actually do it. He gets up, goes towards the Vice President's house, and turns back around and goes back to the bar. <laughs> Drinks himself to sleep. He loses his nerve. The other assassin is supposed to kill the Secretary of State. Now, the Secretary of State is, uh, how do I want to say this? He is a tough, angry individual. This is Secretary Seward. Secretary Seward, just a few days before this, had had a really difficult uh, carriage accident. He broke a bunch of bones. He even possibly broke his jaw. He had his jaw almost like wired shut. He's just this angry old man. The assassin comes to his door. Now, mind you, it's about 10.30 at night. Knocks on the door. His butler opens the door, and he says, Yes? What are you doing here at 10.30 at night? The assassin says, I have medicine for Secretary Seward. I was told to give it to him personally by his doctor. Here is his, his butler saying, it's 10.30. Doctors are not working at 10.30. What are you doing here? The assassin just pushes him aside. He's going upstairs, and Secretary Seward's son is there, and he's at the top of the stairs. He says, who is this man? And here's the butler saying, he says he's from the doctor and he has medicine for your father. And his son just stops him and he says, give it to me. I'll give him the medicine. The assassin pulls out a gun, points it at the son, pulls the trigger, and it misfires. He flips the gun around and beats the son with his revolver. Now, he takes a horrific beating. He goes into the secretary's room, he's in bed, in probably horrific pain, pulls out a knife, and stabs him. It only makes Seward angry. <laughs> he gets out of bed and just mercilessly beats this assassin. The assassin is going to have to run out the door. Seward beats up his own assassin. Now, we go back to Ford's Theater. Lincoln has a bullet about that big lodged in his skull. His wife is screaming when everyone figures out this is not part of the show. She says, we need a doctor. Where's a doctor? There happens to be a very young doctor, 23 years old. He was in the Union Army, is up in the presidential balcony, sees the hole in the president's head, and he says, we have to stop the bleeding. puts his finger into the president's skull and says, we have to move him. Now, in those two sentences, today, both 
are horrifically medical malpractice. Don't move him, and don't put your finger in his skull. Here's the doctor, finger in his skull, with four people carrying the president out of the theater, across the street. They get him to a bed across the street, put him down, and two more older, more experienced surgeons arrive, and they look at this young doctor, and they say, good job. <laughs> That's what you should have done. No, you shouldn't, okay? Don't do that. If you're ever gonna be a doctor, don't put your finger in someone's skull, okay? Write that down if you need to, okay? People say, Lincoln might have survived the gunshot wound. I seriously doubt it. But even if he did, the bacteria would have killed him. He was going to die. And she is dying across the streets. His wife and his closest advisors will join him. Now, I do have to just tell real fast what happens at the end, because two months after the president dies, these conspirators will be found out. Word's going to travel very quickly who was responsible for this. Four people will be executed for their role in the larger conspiracy, including a woman whose only connection to this was she owned the tavern and hotel where these men plotted against Lincoln. Now, that was the evidence against her. A lot of people have said she must have known way more. She must have been a part of it. This is the first time the federal government will execute a woman. Now, as Lincoln's going to be breathing his last, here's his wife next to him. The same woman who lost a son in the war. The same woman who said he hasn't smiled in four years. Is holding his hand by his bedside with his closest advisors. The doctors know they can't do anything. They put their finger in his skull. Of course they can't do anything. As Lincoln's going to die a few hours after he's shot. He will be the first American president to be assassinated. When he breathes his last, his wife holding his hand will watch him leave this world and die. And one of Lincoln's closest advisors, this is his Secretary of War, Edwin Stanton says, how he belongs to age. Now he is immortal. Now everyone will remember him. We are in a strange spot at this point in our history. We don't have a plan B for who takes over if a president dies. There is no clear line of succession. We're going to have to figure it out. And the person who takes over is a southerner. Lincoln's very lenient plan for the South is going to die with him in certain regards. The next president will have his own plan for what to do with the South. And this president's from Tennessee a state that has not yet rejoined the Union at this point. But we're going to talk about him later on.